How's it going, fellow Vanguard? It's Eden for Carter Frank Calgary, and today I am here with... Please introduce yourself. Hi there, I'm uh, Josh McKenna, otherwise known as Soul Kage. I'm one of the uh, administrators of the Vanguard Wiki. Um, I'm also very active on uh, various online channels, and yeah, I'm uh, the winner of this year's Vancouver Regional. So, uh, To be quite honest with all of you watching, this is our second take doing this video. Unfortunately, I made a boo-boo and forgot to record, or not forgot, but didn't record the audio of the first take we did. So uh, all our insight is kind of wasted, but we're at it again. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, Josh is kind enough to go through this pain and torture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so he's gonna be sharing with us his deck profile and his insight for what he played this year. So uh, let's get started the uh, deck profile, shall we? All right. So yeah, this year I decided to play uh, Kagero. Um, it's the I've been playing this game since the very beginning, and Kagero was the very first client I played. So it's always held a special meaning in my heart. Um, I actually this is actually the first time I played Kagero since uh, uh, in regionals since 2012, and that's actually the best year I've done since this, since obviously this one where I won. Um, so it was kind of cool going back to the clan and uh, obviously it did well for me. So um, I chose to play the Overlord build. Um, and in particular, I played Dragonic Overlord the Legend and Dragonic Overlord the Great. Um, so yeah, my main ride is obviously Dragonic Overlord the Legend from the Legend deck of this, of uh, that he's named for. Um, when you ride them, kind of boss one, soul boss one, check top five, and you get to add a flame dragon to your hand from among them. Um, this is a very wide range of cards in compared to most keyword searches because it gets you your perfect guards, it gets you your stride fodders, it gets you certain rear guards, it gets you uh, uh, triggers, it gets you uh, heals for G guardians to allow you to get your GB2 strides early on if you go first. Um, it, it just it really helps uh, set up you up set you up for that and uh, yeah and then its other uh, effect is uh, GB two just kind of boss one uh, discard a grade three um, during the main phase and he uh, gains fifteen k power he gets one plus one grade and he gets plus one drive check basically, basically becoming a stride on his own um, and then he gets to restand after he attacks a rear guard by discarding any three cards in your hand. Um, buying you six drive checks a turn. Um, and uh, the restand oh. helps set up uh, some other rearguard plays, which I'll get to later on. Um, and then I'm running for my backup, Draconic Overlord the Great, uh, one of the original Legion cards from uh, Legion Era. Um, very similar effect to the Legend. He uh, legions with uh, Perdition Dragon Neoflame. And uh, when he attacks a rearguard, kind of lost one. At the end of the battle, and restand them by discarding two cards. Uh, this other effect doesn't really come into play very often, but it's there if you need it, which is to uh, choose one of your rear guards as the same name as the unit on your vanguard circle, and retire it, and then you retire one of your opponent's rear guards as well. Um, when you when you retire one of your opponent's uh, rear guards, either through battle or attack, you can use them. Um, that that third effect didn't really come into play during regionals, but I have used it on occasion outside of regionals, so. But um, he's really just, he actually really kind of came in handy for me during certain games where I just could not seem to stride. Mm -hmm. uh, because he allows me to send a bunch of triggers back to my deck and then still make good swings. So uh, he helped, he came He came in when I, handy when I needed him. So, All right. so uh, you played the great, why not um, the other options like Blade Master or uh, the end or the, and the cross? Um, well, Blade Master, I'm actually huge. I'm actually a huge fan of Blade Master. Um, when the GR started, I uh, wanted to go back into Kigero and because uh, I went away from it for a bit, and uh, I went, picked up Blade Master simply because um, the end was a, a much more expensive option. Um, I did used to play the end. In fact, I actually became infamous for playing the end back in the day uh, online. Um, but uh, I didn't really when season three hit and it became Dauntless the end. Dauntless was an extremely expensive card, and I just didn't feel like going that route. So I ultimately uh, traded the deck for um, uh, an Eradicator Descendant deck, uh, which worked for me at the time, but uh, kind of came back to bite me because the end came a lot more expensive card. Um, so I want to play Master. It, um, it did fairly well for me, just, uh, considering all it really does is retire, but um, it, it does the job very well. But 
Uh, the new Blade Master stuff is a lot more counterblast heavy than the old stuff was. Um, and I just feel its G-Zone is a bit lacking in comparison to Overlord's. Um, because Overlord has access to pretty much the exact same things, except he has access to more things that Blade Master doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Overlord has a bit more countercharging options than Blade Master does. And um, and then Blade Master's when they're when they're uh, sort of glimmer breath clone, you could say. Um, it comes twenty one k after you pay the cost, which is kind of last one, still last one, and it can retire grade one unit, and then gains two k for every empty regard circle your opponent has. Well, the Hollem does pretty much the same thing for free. So, yeah. Um, much as I love Laymaster, I just found Overlord to be a bit more consistent and had better options. So. Um, and as for, for the cross now, um, I'm actually more of a fan of the legends, uh, as a as a unit to be on. And the, um, the cross end is, they're both persona blasts. So it takes away from your, your legends a bit. Um, it's also a more expensive option. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it seemed to work okay for me. The only downside to running the legend is that you do have to run Neoflame who, is admittedly a tad subpar, but um, yeah, it is what it is. All right. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. All right. Moving on, I guess. <laughs> All right. So, um, great twos. Um, I've already mentioned it, but I'm running three copies of Perdition Dragon Neoflame, uh, which is the Legion Mate for Trigon Overlord the Great. Um, his effect when he's placed in a rear guard circle. Uh, he gains the ability to counterblast one when a rear guard in the same column him, as him is sent to the drop zone uh, during that turn, and to retire the rear guard in the same column as him um, in the back row, basically. Um, or the front row if you happen to retire one in the back row, I guess. Um, but uh, because it works for attacks and for. Uh, Card effects, it allows you to swing at rear guards and then suddenly back pop the other unit behind it as well, uh, even early game. Uh, for example, today I took out a TikTok by attacking um, a rear guard that was boosting it on the rear guard column. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So he, he is useful at times, but uh, he doesn't come into play too often. But at the same time, he's not a card I'm afraid to go into a lot and just allow me to rush early on and. Um, set myself up to push my point early on. So, um, yeah, so I'm running three copies of that, and then I'm running four copies of Berserk Lord Dragon. Um, one of my main retire units outside of um, uh, Titan, uh, the Stride. Um, GB1, when my Grade 4 Vanguard attacks, which kind of makes GB1 kind of weird, but um, I guess new bells, the original new bells is a thing. But, yeah, uh, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, when Great Four Vanguard attacks, counterblast one and uh, retire an opponent's grade two or lower rear guards. And the thing that's nice about that is that it works on multiple swings. So if I have a restanding Vanguard, I get to use the effect twice a turn. So um, yeah, I that's basically what I run, run for more retiring options, basically. Right. Um, and then I'm running four copies of the key unit of grade two unit of the deck. Emperor Dragon Knight in a Hollem. Uh, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty good. Way better than his old 10k form. <laughs> um, yeah, his effects. Uh, is uh, GB1. When I have an Overlord Vanguard, he gains 2k power during my turn. And when my Grave 4 Vanguard with Overlord in its name attacks, he gains 5,000 power until the end of the turn per swing. So, again, if I have a restanding Vanguard, he attacks with 21 on his own. So... Um, this deck does lack, lack a bit of boosting power at times, so the fact that he does swing for good numbers on his own is very useful. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's my great two lineup right now. Okay. All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, so uh, grade one lineup. Um, I'm running currently three copies of Lava Flow Dragon, which is your standard stride fodder. Mm-hmm. You don't use his first effect because you're not running Dragonic Blade Master, but he counts as a great three when you're striding, and that's why you run him. Pretty staple in most decks, I hear. <laughs> yeah, especially in this era. <laughs> um, 
I was running three copies of Spear of the Flame Dragon Tar. Um, when act once per turn at GB1, you can counter blast one and soul blast one to give one of your units plus 4,000 power. And when it attacks the Vanguard, check top five cards for a Flame Dragon at your hand. Great three Flame Dragons, sorry. Um, uh, again, useful with the ace turns where you're attacking the Vanguard twice, so you get to check top five twice. Mm hmm. Uh, sometimes even if you're really gambling and you really need that grade three, what well, you might get the top five to discard for later for the the, uh, the aces uh, cost. So um, he also allows Nahala, gives Nahala magic numbers when boosted, so he attacks for like thirty one. Um, I didn't he didn't this didn't really come into play unfortunately uh, during regionals mainly because I lack the counter blasts, uh, which I'll go into a bit later on. But um, when I have used him, he has been very useful. So. Um, I was running three copies of that and only three flower flows because my thought process at the time was, well, I gained to check top five for flame dragons, grade three flame dragons anyway, so that helps alleviate that a bit more and gives you more boosting options, but um, yeah, um, I'll probably be adjusting that uh, for Continentals. All right, yeah. um, and then for my other grade ones, um, key grade one of the deck, Lizard General Conro. Uh, he's got a similar effect to Lavaflow's first effect, except for Overlords. Uh, when he's placed in a Rearguard Circle, reveal a grade 3 Overlord to my hand, and then I can search my deck for any Overlord unit and add it to my hand and then discard a card. Um, again, very useful for gaining specific cards you need. To get If you want to get Overlords in the drop zone early for a Defeat Flare Dragon later on, you can do that. Um... And yeah, I guess get you more stride bar if you need that as well. And then his main effect that you you also run him for is uh, act. You can retire him, and it's not GB one, so it's even useful when you're when you're have not GB one and just using a labor regular legion attack. Uh, choose your uh, banker of the overlord in its name, and until end of turn, it gains the ability to counter charge two per attack it makes that turn. So on your um, your restand turns, basically counter charge four for retiring it. So it basically allows you to go from having no counter blast to, to going back to full counter blast again. So it, it's very useful yeah. for them. And with Nahalum being a card of the deck, uh, losing the rear guard doesn't really hurt that much, right? Exactly. Um, I also had several times where I would call two Nahalums to the front row and then call a Berserk Lure behind one of the Nahalums mm -hmm. and then fire a, a Conro. So that, say I'm at three damage and I attack with a Vanguard, I counter charge two, I counter blast one with. Berserk Lord, because, again, they have the same timing, so I get to choose which one of those I get to use. And then um, I get to retire something. And um, and then I get to do the effect again when I can't attack again. So it gives me a lot more counter blast to use Berserk Lord's effect um, in mid-battle phase, which is why the main reason why I run for Berserk Lord Dragons is because of how useful that is. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Conro is a good card, unfortunately. I'll never. Uh, this is the best version we got of him. Rest in peace, original Conro. <laughs> oh, I was so crushed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, Spike Power still gets a version of him, but okay. uh, <laughs> one way or another, we get Conro. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the one that uh, I know that you were very curious about. Um, my perfect guard lineup. That I'm sure a lot of people are like, huh. Um, <laughs> I know for sure. I was really confused when I saw it go up on the website. Yeah, so I'm running one Protect Orb Dragon, two Rampart Dragons, Perdition, and then one Seal Dragon, Rhino Cross. Um, yeah, that was not a typo. That was what I was running at Regionals. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, honest answer to why that is, is budget. <laughs> uh, because yeah when i was playing blame master before i didn't bother getting protector because i wanted regular perfect guards more because i didn't need the counter charge i hardly used any counter blast in my old blade master deck and the having the regular perfect guard was useful because it gave me ability to block say uh dimension police rear guard attacks on the vanguard from the from vanguard to rear guard so they can restand with laurel it allowed me to stop the crosses restand uh, when they attack a rear guard um, stuff like that that's 
being able to protect perfect guard rear guards is basically why I was I was running the original perfect guard before. Um, and then uh, then the legend came out, and then Protect Orb went from being like uh, like an eight dollar card to being like a thirty dollar card. So <laughs> I kind of missed the boat in that one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just really just poor timing on attaining these cards on your essentially own. yeah um, oh man that protect with bites <laughs> yeah <laughs> the uh the one protect orb i was running uh, i picked up at spring fest uh, earlier this year for like eight dollars i was like shocked to see it that cheap i think it was just before the legend came out but it was after it was already announced mm -hmm. so, like the price hype had already started on the on the online websites but i guess the store hadn't caught up to that so i got i got lucky and got one of them but uh the other ones i just happened to pick up online for cheap so they're flame dragons. I can still add them to my hand with the Legends GB2, but uh, yeah, I didn't have the counter charge option, unfortunately. Um, uh, I am. I did get a second Protect Orb during regionals, uh, but I wasn't able to put it into my deck because it was during regionals. So, um, yeah, they'll probably change in my uh, future builds of this. Though uh, I'll probably be running more Protect Orbs in the future. All right, let's hope you get those uh, before Cod Nanos, eh? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the counter charge would have been useful to get more stuff like Tar's effect off, or being able to retire more stuff. So, um, yeah, there's been times where it's it's very useful to have that counter charge. All right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, grade zeros. Uh, for starter, I chose to use Blizzard Hero Undo. He's the Kagro version of last year's Shadow Paladin Legend X starter, uh, full bow. Grave, I think it's called. Um, but he has a bit more utility than Football Brave. Uh, again, kind of last one, at GB1, put him to soul, and switch your deck for any Overlord unit and add to your hand. Uh, this allows you to set up your Legend GB2 plays. This allows you to set up uh, having a uh, Overlord in your hand to discard for the Ace plays. It um, sets you up for the Stride Fodder for next turn if you need that. Uh, the other option I could have run was Static, uh, who allows you to retire another one of your opponent's rear guards of their choice when you retire a rear guard by putting it into the soul, mm -hmm. uh, which is very useful. And uh, I, I usually run that for Blade Master, but uh, I just found this one to be a bit more, uh, the utility of it was a bit more useful for what I wanted to use it for. Uh, so for the safety net, more or less. Essentially, yes. Yeah, yeah the safety net. It, 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 it's come in handy quite a few times, actually, to have that safety net. Um, so, um, then I'm running four copies for my triggers. I'm running four copies of Dragon Knight Janet. He is your standard double rear trigger for the Striders. Uh, he is the Blade Master crit. Uh, you run him because you run the Blade Master stride. So, <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, yep. Yeah, when Blade Master Vanguard attacks, put him to soul, draw a card, get Vanguard gains 5,000 power. Um, he's also very useful for getting your blaze off. Uh, because he just requires for blaze to work, it just requires you to have more regards on your opponent during any one of your attacks, uh, including even the attack it's making right that moment before you put it into the soul. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very useful for that regard, as well as making um, your two crit vanguard a bit harder to guard if they don't have the, the perfect guard for that. All right. Um, another thing that I'm having a lot of questions people question me about is I'm running. I'm not going to show each one because there's just a whole bunch of them. It take me forever to look through them all. I'm running 12 random Flame Dragon critical triggers. Um, okay, interesting. So uh, why no draws or stands? Uh, no stands, because stands do not work well with Overlord. Um, <laughs> because you need to attack first so you can power up your Nahalams. Uh, and plus, this deck doesn't have a lot of rearguard presence, to be perfectly honest, because it doesn't have any way of superior calling them, like your Paladin clans or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or lots of other clans that superior call these days. Um, so basically you don't, that's why you don't run the stands. And then for draws, um, I do see a lot of overload decks these days run like four to six draw triggers and then they have a lot of trouble finishing games. And that's why they have a lot of problems running into timeout actually, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Usually regionals with the 25 minute time limit. But, um, I find by running the 12 critical triggers, it uh, allows me to keep up with clans that have a lot of multi-attacks. Um, and so I can push them to high damage early on, mm -hmm. uh, which allows them to force them to have to discard a lot of cards to guard while at the same time I'm retiring their rear guards. So they do have to drop cards to put the field as well. 
and that's how I conserve my own my own hand advantage by doing that. Um, plus, it allows it sets it makes my ace turns, it makes my titan turns, it makes my new bell turns a lot more threatening by having that uh, all those critical, tr critical triggers in my deck. Um, the uh, uh, the Gatling Claw, yeah, a lot of people swear by it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of one for one retires. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't really give me any. I'm not. I'm not. Get, I'm losing something, and my opponent's losing something essentially. Um, so it's, it's just a wash for you, right? Yeah, and you're losing a counter blast on top of that. Well, the deck is already very counter blast heavy. Um, I mean, yeah, if I was running protectors, maybe, but um, sometimes you just if if sometimes people only give me one counter blast, and I need that for the legends on ride skill because that's way more useful. Um, than being able to retire a starter early game that I'm going to retire later on anyways. So, uh, it does hurt certain decks, and, uh, but the vast majority of decks really don't care that much, to be perfectly honest, uh, about Gatling Claw. And then, if you don't draw into it early, well, it does nothing for you. And then, draw triggers... In my opinion, they don't really add more defense than a critical trigger does, because of the 5k shield they have. Um, yeah, if you damage check them, that's great. But if you're only running, like, say, four of them, or then the odds of that happening is, isn't very high. Um, it doesn't happen very often for me, at least. And um, if you do run more, then you're also putting yourself in situations where you're like, oh, I really need a crit to win, and then you keep checking draw triggers. And it's like, well, if those are crits, you're going to win right there. So that uh, that's kind of why I'm on the 12 crit train for that reason for All this right. deck. That's, that's, that's totally fair. Since yep. this deck is based on Restand, why not, right? Pretty much. Um, and then, yeah, for the your standard four heal triggers, I'm running the Steel Dragon heal trigger. It was the one I happened to run into. It was that or Mother Warp Dragon, and that's what I ran into was the Steel Dragon one. So, uh, again, you run it, run that one in particular because it's a Flame Dragon, so you can add to your hand with Legend skill. Um, and for you, G-Guarding. <laughs> yeah, for G-Guarding, yes. It's actually coming very handy to be able to do that because when you go first, well, I can G-Guard and then set up my bigger strides instead of having to go into, into my uh, my uh, usual first stride option, which isn't actually that great. So, um, yeah, so that's the main deck. And going into G-Zone. All right, here we go. So the first, main first stride option that I mentioned is Vortex Desire. Um, he's from the Legend deck. Um, when he attacks, you can flip any G unit, and he gains the on-hit effect to retire a rearguard equivalent to the amount of Flame Dragons you have in your Vanguard Circle. Uh, this includes the Heart card. So, you typically it's on-hit retire 2. If you happen to be in Legion, it's on-hit retire 3, but that's rarely going to come up. But uh, um, He's Pretty much the only card thing I usually stride into that doesn't cost counter blast, which so that's why I run him over say Mustafa, um, who does have a guarantee retire, but again it's more counter blast you're using up in a deck that uses lots of counter blast. So um, I just like that it's free, so I can even with one counter blast I can get my legend skill up and go into vortex and set up my plays for next turn and sets up my GB two uh, get sets up my GB two early, so. Uh, if I need to go into the Legends GB2, I can. And then uh, it also sets up uh, my next drive, which I'll show, which is Draconic Blade Master Titan. Mm -hmm. Basically, Kagura's bread and butter at the moment. Essentially, yes. Um, very, very useful stride that came out of set 7. Um, what he does is uh, act counter blast 1 once per turn at GB2, and uh, flip any G units, and then for every face up titan you have in your g-zone you get to retire one of your opponent's rear guards and for each uh and then if you ha when your vanguard uh, becomes blazing and he has a blaze ability himself then he gets plus one critical until the end of the turn um, again if you don't know what blaze is the blaze is active if you have more rear guards than your opponent when during one of any one of your attacks that turn um and then last until the end of the turn so uh he's basically my mid game card he retires a bunch of stuff um, I flip I flip out a copy of him with Vortex so I can retire two on the first time striding him, and I can I sometimes go into him two to three times a game depending on the matchup, um, and then uh, he like I said that he's a mid game card because he has that plus one crit he forces my opponent to guard early on especially with how many crits I'm running, so even I've I, 
So if, even if they want to no guard me at two damage, well, if I check double crit, that's the game right there. So yeah, there you go. Um, so he's always a threat. He uh, draws a lot of sheep guards or draws perfect guards, and and yeah, and then um, now they're so I'm running four copies of him, and then I'm running four copies of Dragonic Overlord the Ace. Um, this is the promo version that came with the Legend deck because the Generation Rare version that when it first before Legend deck came out was like fifty dollars each, and I was like, yep, yeah, no, <laughs> no, Blessed Bushiroad gave us a, a break for yeah. <laughs> I was very happy for that uh, that was reprinted in the Legend deck, so I picked up two copies of the Legend deck so I could have uh, four copies of that card. Um, so yeah, his effect is uh, Counterblast 2. Uh, uh, if you have another copy face up in your G-Zone... Sorry, Counterblast 2, flip another copy of him. And then um, he gains... He, he loses his drive check, but he gets to restand and gain 5,000 power on the restand if you discard a Grade 3 Overlord and another card from your hand uh, at the end of the battle that you tax. And um, I just want to add an interesting thing about this card that a lot of people don't, may not realize is that uh, you can actually, even if, if you're going first stride and you have nothing face up, he does require, typically require to, ha to get the full effect to have another uh, at least two cards face up in your G zone. But if you were to say pay the cost twice, if you happen to be in that situation where you could do that, and you have Condro, so you get the, all the counter charge back. Well, if you do it, pay the cost twice, which is flip up two, flip up two uh, the aces, you get the restand effect on first stride. So you can so do that. that. What oh, you can do? That. Yep. Huh. You can totally do that. Victor Plasma can do the same thing for new grapplers. Um, yeah, it's it doesn't. You don't usually go into that, but it's an option you can consider. Um, so that is it. It's a, it's and like I said, you have Conroe to get all the counter charge back. So the four counter blast doesn't uh, hurt you as much, uh, and you don't. And no, you don't lose a drive check twice because you don't actually get the effect until you pay the cost twice. So, um, yeah. So that that's an option for that. Uh, so yeah, he basically is my sort of my quasi finisher. He sets up again all my stuff that gains stuff when I restand. Um, if my opponent has. I know they have a perfect guard, but they may not have two perfect guards, so they have, might have a bunch of G, uh, a couple of G guardians in their hand. Um, he basically helps set up, try to push my opponent towards game, or uh, push them in a bad position where I can possibly win next turn with uh, my next card. Um, next, next card being my MVP of regionals. Surprisingly, considering I thought G guardians would completely shut this guy down, mm -hmm. is a transcendent dragon, Draconic Nouvelle. Um, Bagel Express, the uh, new version of the original Grade 4 for Kigero. Oh man, this card can be pretty annoying if you don't prepare for it. Yeah, and a lot of people get caught off guard by it, surprisingly. Um, if you don't know what he does, um, Catalyst 1, you got GB2, and flip up a copy of him for the main phase. And for the rest of the turn, your opponent cannot Miracle Heal. No 6 damage heals during any of your uh, that turn. And then when he attacks, your opponent can't guard with grade 1 units. Um, I wish it was grade 1 or higher, but they can start guard with grade 2s. But uh, it does shut down the perfect guards. So uh, sometimes when they just have a bunch a bunch of 5k shields and maybe a couple of perfect guards in their hands, well, they pretty much lose if they're at 5 damage instantly. Um, and even if they're at 4, I'm running 12 crits. So if they risk a no guard, odds are I'm probably going to hit crit them and win. Um mm -hmm. If I, as long as I hit one trigger, so. Um, and then it's game over. <laughs> pretty much. Um, so he's won me quite a few games, actually. I, I was actually quite surprised at how many games he won me. Um, I even debated bumping up to four because of that, but I'm running two copies of him. But uh, I just find these to be a bit more better utility, and um, it's, like I said, uh, he doesn't really generate any major advantage on his own, other than he does force your opponent to drop a bunch more shield than just perfect guarding. But, uh, um, yeah, so that's, 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 that's that card. So, um, yeah. and then my, to finish up my regular strides for G guardians, I'm running one copy of air element sea breeze, which I am very th thankful that Bushiro made because it shut down ripples and all the great stalling. And, yeah. uh, oh man. Uh, great nature with great stalling was annoying. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Um, 
Sadly, he doesn't really do a lot for this deck. Uh, he's really just there if uh, I do run into the stall game and I need to push my opponent hard with a good stride. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're not aware what he does, if, if you're landing on a rock, because uh, most people run this card nowadays, um, he works for any clan. Um, when during main phase, if your opponent's at grade two and they did not ride that their previous turn, uh, you can counterblast two and discard any card from your hand, and you can uh, stride him. Um, there was a, apparently a ruling that uh, one of the judges misruled on uh, the runner up uh, you mentioned on your video that the judge claimed he had to discard an actual grade three as well, and that's not the case. So don't, don't let people tell you that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, then you can just regular stride him too if you want, uh, which I did do once. Um, but he's really just there for insurance, and if I need another card to flip up that doesn't, I don't need later on, like with Titan. So makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, G Guardians. Um, so I'm running four of them, as is the standard. Um, under a matter file. Uh, so, first one I'm running is from the uh, Fires Collection, Azil Orb Dragon. Mm -hmm. He is the standard uh, plus 5k shield, so there's 20k shield, as long as my opponent has less than 5 rear guards, which is almost always when you're playing Kigero. Um, it's basically just there so that I have a G Guardian that doesn't cost Counterblast, and uh, it gives me a bit more shield value and is useful against the matchups that. They really don't care if the rear guards are retired, like the grand blue matchup. Mm -hmm. so that's basically what he's there for, setting up my GB2 early on as well, well and all that jazz. Um, then I'm running two copies of Denial Griffin. Just two yeah. copies? That's interesting. Two okay. copies, yes. Because I'm running Azul Orb. Um, yeah. Uh, he's. I've, I've actually never found myself in a position where I wanted to use all use three copies as well. So, um, he is pretty much the staple of Kagero right now, and probably the reason why a lot of people are saying Kagero is even relevant right now. Um, so I'm very happy we have him. Uh, his effect is kind of last one when he's placed on a guardian circle, and retire the attacking rear guard, regardless of how much power it has. It is dead. So, yeah, it's it, it it's. Very, very useful um, for that regard. Um, and then the last G Guardian I'm running is pretty much standard for your typical Overlord deck. Is the Generation Rare from set 7. Where did it go? This Defeat Claire Dragon. Hey, good card. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Defeat Claire Dragon, I'm running at one copy. His effect is kind of boss 1. And um, you pay the cost when your Vanguard is attacked by your opponent's Vanguard. You take two Grade 3 Overlords in your drop zone, put them back into your deck at the bottom of the deck. And then you retire your opponent's back row. Um, so resist, don't care. Uh, <laughs> which, is, which is useful because I really hate that keyword. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do. I know I sure yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's also very useful for shutting down the uh, Sanctuary Guards plays, the uh, Laurel plays, the um, certain Magia plays, like the Cat Knight boots and Cutie Pierre Troopers and all that jazz. Um, I didn't actually use him during regionals, um, but uh, he's just there for those matchups, basically. Um, the downside to him is that he can only be used on the Vanguard attack, and most of the time the Vanguard's attacking for 26 anyways. Mm -hmm. So you still have to drop at least one more card to block the Vanguard. So when you have an option of going perfect guard or retiring their back row and then dropping more cards, and most of the time I go for the perfect guard, so I'm not having to risk going a two to pass or something like that that they break through. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he is just there just because that is still a very useful option to have against certain matchups. And yeah, that's the deck. All right. Uh, any other insights you want to give on the deck, like on your tournament and whatnot? Um, yeah, so uh, in case people were curious what I ran into, um, first round I faced Harmony. Um, I can't remember too much about this one. She wasn't running the um, Olivia, but she was running like, a bunch of Loris's. Mm -hmm. But um, 
the strat, but um, the constant retiring did kind of like divide her a bit um, earlier on. Um, so uh, I can't remember too much how that one went down, but uh, yeah. And then uh, game two, um, I faced Gear Chronicle, Time Leap, Chrono Jet, the standard. Um, this one was very close, could have gone either way. Um, I kind of felt like the fact that a lot of Gear Chronicle players are playing almost rainbow trigger lineups really came into into my favor because he was only running like five or six crits. So um, it basically came down to him needing to hit a crit trigger or a stand trigger on his um, Chrono Jet restand from next stage, mm -hmm. and he didn't get it. And then I won next turn. So um, round three was against uh, Link Joker Messiah. And if you saw the uh, top eight, he was actually the same guy I faced in the top eight. Um, I actually lost this game because of me misplaying. Uh, I, I pretty much would have won next turn. And I had two perfect guards in my hand. He attacked with Big Crunch. I was like, oh, I want to go into the ace next turn. And I kind of want to save these perfect guards for Amnesty in case he survives. And I, I, I could go into Nouvelle, but he might be able to block it. So I'll just no guard this. And then, they, then he just checks double crit and beats me. So <laughs> Overextending your guard there, I see. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I was kicking myself for that one. Uh, I was actually afraid I wasn't going to make top eight uh, for losing the third round, but uh, uh, luckily I still made it. So, um, and then uh, yeah, I got my revenge in the top eight, so uh, it made me uh, happy to get my revenge and uh, beat him two zero in top eight. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, so yeah, and, uh, that guy's actually from my locals too, so uh, <laughs> a bit of a friendly crowd with them. So, um, so next round I faced uh, Great Nature Big Belly. This match I probably stacked my hardest, so I really didn't get to see what this deck does. It was like the first time facing it, but mm -hmm. uh, um, like my first ride Vortex, I, he chewed it past me, and I broke through with like a heal and a crit. Um, so I retired two regards, dealt two damage, healed the damage, and uh, he went to a Fank, and I survived that, and then I went to Titan. He chewed it past me again, and I took triple crit. Oh, disgusting. That's gross. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so uh, it was like five damage right there, and that was the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, <then. laughs> um, that was like probably yeah. I, so uh, that was uh, quite unfortunate for him. But uh, um, next round, I faced Dark Base uh, Mega Colony. Um, I think that's not my first time facing this particular build since I uh, got all this new support. Um, I almost ended the game super fast because he wasn't guarding any of my attacks and he got to a point where he was still at grade two and I was attacking with the Vanguard at grade three mm -hmm. and four damage and he no guarded me again. So if I checked a crit, I would have won right there, but I checked blanks and he was at five damage to like my low damage. And he managed to extend the game for a while from all the giga paralyzing he was doing and he opt randomized me twice, but uh, eventually finished him off, I think, with new bells. So. Um, the next round I faced against, um, the cross. I actually won this with zero damage because he just, nothing was really going in his favor and he just kept not attacking my vanguard to not give me any counter blast to use. Mm -hmm. He just kept going after my rear guards. And, um, I, uh, I actually got gray stuck at that one point during this game. Uh, um, uh, I only had to Jesus once uh, during the tournament, actually. Uh, during uh, round one, actually, I had to Jesus to grade zero, and I was like, oh, this is not a great start to the tournament. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I still managed to win that one. But, uh, That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. But um, no, this game, I, I was missing a grade three, and then I happened to drive, I managed to drive check uh, over the great um, after being great stuck for one turn. So I, that was very useful for me, that game, because I was at least able to do Legion attacks. And then um, that's also when the regular purple guards came into handy because when he did his legion attack to try to attack my rear guard to restand, um, I just put regular purple guard in it, so he wasn't able to do anything. And then uh, I eventually finished him up by regularly striding uh, um, sea breeze because it doesn't cause counter last. So and, yeah, that's the thing. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so then uh, and then top eight, um, sorry, documented, but faced uh, Blink Joker, and then I faced. Um, Gear Chronicle, uh, some people will complain that uh, I double crit a lot during that match, but again, my deck's designed for it. I run 12 of them. So yeah, I mean, you really have nothing to complain about at this point. Exactly. It's like if I hit two triggers, it's going to be double crit most of the time, or a, or a crit and a heal or something. So um, 
like yeah it's like people go that's the thing that people always go like oh draw triggers are amazing but at the same time when you're facing against draw triggers you're very happy your opponent drive checks them and not crits so <laughs> uh, yeah so that's the thing um that was ended up being two games to one that one um and then i faced uh tetrakaze and i got and you faced in your uh, you had your feature on your channel yeah and the finals um that played really heavily into my favor because of my retiring abilities. Uh, kind of hurt his own engorge abilities. Um, he did go into Dogma once on me, but I was only at two damage, so I easily survived. And he did go into Dark Rats Rex on me once, but it was like 10k swing to my bank, 11k Vanguard. So I was like, mm. I just dropped a 10k shield for no pass, and that was and that was pretty much game after that. Um, uh, I actually had one major misplay in that match. I guess the the day got on to me, and uh, I I went to, I should have destroyed uh, Nouvelle, and I went to the Ace instead. And oh, yeah. uh, after and afterwards, like, oh wait, I don't have another Grade Three to discard for the Ace. I have a Drive Check one, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, oh, at least you can't. Well, on top in the end, one less Drive Check, so yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end, you came up on top, so yeah. Yeah, so didn't come back to buy me. Um, I was lucky I didn't run into some of my worst matchups, which uh, include uh, Grand Blue. Mm -hmm. um, the hollow, hollow mechanic is very annoying for me. Um, because, again, they retire at the end of the turn, so I don't need to retire, or they're going to retire anyway, so there's no point in algorithming them. So, um, yeah, I was kind of happy not to run into you with your 7Cs deck. <laughs> <laughs> um I was at a local tournament today and actually faced seven Cs. And while I'm 50-50 as the deck overall, um, I did uh, lose a close match today against it. But uh, uh, it was still a good match. But um, yeah, and the other matchup I not don't really want to run into is Magia. Mm -hmm. um, oh, they pretty much get a, yeah, they get a full field every turn once they start striding for very little counterblast, and they don't cut anything from hands, and they don't leave me anything to retire. So. Yeah, it's very annoying to deal with. I can pretty much just defeat Flare them or Denial Griffin them and then hope I can just crit them with Titan and the Ace and Nivelle yeah. eventually. So, um, it's not a very favorable matchup for me. Uh, last, I've only faced it once recently and I did lose 2 0. Um, I probably could have won one of those games if I went to Nivelle when he was at 5 and I went to the Ace instead and he had two perfect guards. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um,. Yeah, so that's those are probably my worst matchups. Um, I'm so far I've only lost one game to Gear Chronicle and uh, the three matches I played against it lately. So I'm feeling okay against it, though I don't know how much more improved they're going to be with all the new support coming just for Continentals, um, Gear Groovy and uh, Delay Blazer and oh, you know stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the most annoyingly is Hetero Hound Dragon, which kind of puts my uh, it almost puts my defeat player to, to shame a little bit. But, Almost, uh, but hey. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I'm not, I'm not fully decided whether I'm going to play this or a different deck I have right now for Continentals, but um, I'm still deciding. But, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if I do play this deck, I'll probably make some changes to it so that oh, yeah, uh, right. some surprises for people. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I think we're coming to the end of this video. Uh, Again, thank you so much for uh, sharing your deck and insight, and good luck to you on Continentals. Uh, I know for sure a lot of us will be rooting for you and to represent Canada at the national yeah. event. So, yeah, I think I'm like the only Canadian that actually made top four. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's right. like there's like a dual says and the thing one other person, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, again, uh, thank you so much, my fellow bangers. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with someone who you think would appreciate it. And as always, my fellow bangers, be sure to stand up to the occasion. And I'll see y'all in the next video I make. Uh, so, bye-bye. Peace out.